Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been far too long. Um, most of what's happened is I've got a new job that requires me to work a lot, obviously, and um, also I've had internet problems where um, like a fox or something has gnawed through the phone line, which is what the internet goes down apparently. So we're waiting for a BT engineer to come and fix that. But in the meantime, so it hasn't gnawed through the whole thing, it's only gnawed through part of it. And in the meantime, the upload speed is so slow. It took me 36 hours to get the last video uploaded. As far as I can remember, it might have been longer than that. Um, so yeah, he's hoping this one goes up a little bit faster than that. What I want to talk about today is something somebody requested, which is about hair protein fillers. So the first question we need to answer is, what is a protein filler for hair? Now, I googled this and the internet said, Colourful neutral protein filler ensures marvellous colour results. The glue that's holding your hair strands together, used in colour processes, fills the gaps in your hair shaft. Now you can find them in sprayable formulas. And here's some examples of protein fillers. So, let's be fair, they sound a little bit too good to be true, don't they? Does it work? Well, it's going to make the outside of your hair very shiny. Um, by coating the hair shaft with the protein filler, um, you're basically creating a new layer um, for the hair colour to penetrate and by coating the hair shaft with this binding agent you're holding all the ingredients inside. Um, so permanent colour will last for longer when you use this stuff. And it might make semi-permanent colour look brighter as well but that's going to depend on which filler you've used, um, how much of it has built up on the outside of your hair and also which brand of semi-permanent colour you've used as well. Oh yeah. So imagine this is our hair shaft. Now, if I can hold the camera still while I just do that, I've got nothing to bounce the camera on today, unfortunately, so we're a little bit wobbly. Um, I've just put those arrows there so that I know where I can draw on the whiteboard. So this is our hair shaft. Now, if it's got lots of holes in it, like this, so say it's got loads of holes in it, then let's say we come along, actually, Let's leave it like that. So this has got holes in it, then we bleach it. What's going to happen is these bits are the only bits that are there. These bits, you can't do anything with a hole. You can't have chemical reactions in nothing. So what's going to happen is that the bleach is going to um, only affect these bits. So it'll create more holes when you bleach your hair. Now, if you get some protein filler, let's just pretend you haven't bleached it as much let's say we've only bleached it once if you get some protein filler so that's going to be our red pen and we color these bits in so we filled in our holes with our protein filler now when the bleach comes again what it can do is this so as you can see the actual hair shaft itself is slightly less damaged because the um, the bleach can go where it's been filled in so you might end up with holes where it's been filled rather than holes in your actual hair so it does actually reduce the damage to use the protein filler it's just it doesn't actually repair the damage if you see you've still only got filled in holes the holes are still there they've just been filled in and they've been filled in with good stuff so they're pretty well filled in they're very professionally filled in shall we say so if this was a wall and it had been repaired you wouldn't know it had got holes in until you took the wallpaper off and looked at it properly but Eventually, if this was a wall, it would need fully replastering, and eventually this hair is going to need cutting off because it's still damaged. Now, here's the um, big issue with anything that's just calling itself protein spray, protein conditioner, protein booster, protein filler. The problem with it is, is that there's a lot of different types of proteins. They're all made of something called amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. I'm explaining that because somebody at work the other day said to me, are amino acids bad for you? They're not. Amino acids are what you need to make your hair grow, okay? Um, and you find that they're what make up proteins. Keratin is the stuff that your hair and your nails are made out of. And they're made out of um, like lots of little amino acids. And there's different types of keratin. And the amino acids, the combination of the amino acids that are used and the amount of each amino acid that's used is what determines which type of keratin you end up with. Um, one of the main amino acids that's used for keratin is called cysteine. Now, this is something that I've seen um, referred to 
as keratin amino acid on a colour filler. I'll just put that here. The uh, problem with keratin buildup is that if you've got nothing on the inside, it's like a bridge with too much weight on it and it just collapses the hair shaft and you end up with brittleness and breakage. If you do end up with protein filler um, buildup, what will happen is that the colours won't take on your hair anymore. It'll make your hair less porous, which is why they think it's better for it. But the colours like semi-permanent or demi-permanent colours won't take to the outside of your hair very well if you use too much of this protein filler because it'll just slide off. There won't be anything for the colour to stick to because the protein filler will have filled all of the outside of the hair and the hair doesn't normally have a fully smooth surface it usually kind of has those little kind of cuticle bits that do that so if it fills all those in and makes them straight like that there's nowhere for the hair color to stick so it'll stick to the outside and then after a day or two it'll all just wash off and this is a diagram of hair basically i don't know if you can see this particularly well i will post in the static picture as well it's just i'm not sure how to do sound over that um so basically as you can see, the picture in the middle shows you the um, different layers of that the hair is made of. Now, if you remember my diagram from my last video, it was a bit of an oversimplification and I said that at the time. Um, basically, this is a more complicated explanation of the same thing. Now, the one on this side is a cross section, so that's if you cut that that way and then turned it on its side, that's what you'd see. As you can see, there's lots of different layers of different types of keratin. So the medulla, for example, has got a different type of keratin in it than the cortex, which has a different type of keratin in it than the cuticle. So um, everything there that goes from there to there, that's all the stuff that actually grows out of the head. So that's all the stuff that's on your actual hair, rather than the stuff that um, helps it grow. Kind of like with an egg, you've got your eggshell, and then once the um, chick is ready to hatch after the egg is um, gestated for long enough the chick comes out but the eggshell gets left behind and it's the same with this the outer layers get left behind as the stuff in the middle is ready to come out so that's a diagram of hair and this is why it's so complicated and why you can't possibly say that those um, fillers will actually repair the hair and um, this is a diagram of keratin um, this is a keratin molecule, just in case you're wondering. The R group means it's a group of individual um, atoms that don't contribute to the overall chemical structures. This is just showing the, sh the structure rather than every individual atom in it. Um, the N's are nitrogens, the C's are carbons, O's are oxygens, H are hydrogens, and all the funny lines and things are different types of bonds. So you've got like your double bond between the C and the O, you've got hydrogen bonds, you've got um, dative bonds, you've got all sorts of bonds going on in there. And what I would say is that because this is only one type of keratin, um, because those R groups are what determine the different type of keratin, um, you can't say for definite that the keratin that's in a filler is going to actually be the right type of keratin to fix your hair. Conclusion. Underneath the protein filler, your hair is exactly the same as it was before. If you fill a wall with spackle, such as polyfiller, the wall still has the damage underneath it. It's just now looks smooth and gives a nice surface for putting wallpaper over. It is possible for your hair to be too damaged for protein filler to help it. If this is the case, all you can do is cut the damage off and let the new um, roots grow out and start again when it grows back. At the end of the day, the hair filler is very, very similar to the stuff your hair is made of. But it's not your hair, it didn't grow out of your scalp. Um, and so it'll cover over the damage, but it can't ever truly restore your hair to the way it was before you used any colourant or anything. I think the polyfiller one is actually quite a good analogy in terms of, if you think about it, you've got a wall full of holes and you fill it with polyfiller to smooth those holes over. I'll put a picture up. And... Um, yeah, you've got a nice smooth surface, but if you get more holes in it, you can't keep using the polyfiller to fix all those holes, because eventually you don't have any plaster left on the wall, all you've got is polyfiller, and polyfiller isn't very good as a plaster. It's good at fixing plaster in little holes, it's a filler, it's not a... it doesn't repair it properly. 
it's 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 a repair in terms of it's a short term fix but it doesn't restore the wall it doesn't restore the plaster and make the plaster better again if you see what i mean so yeah um that's my take on hair protein fillers i would particularly be wary and take with a big pinch of salt which means don't believe um those people that are saying that your hair will turn green if you don't use a protein filler before turning it brown again right my hair was white before i'll put a picture in it's this color now it's taken me like what a month maybe two months to get it to this color all i did was i put an auburn box dye on my hair from it being white blonde and then i put a brown box dye on top of the auburn it didn't have to be a special one it didn't have to be anything complicated that was all I have done. Now it's washing out a little bit at the bottom because my hair is still a little bit more porous and allegedly those um, protein fillers can fix that but I don't see the point in using large, uh, in wasting large amounts of money on hair when, do you know what, hair colour fades anyway. It's always faded. Hair colour will fade. Okay guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know if you've got any questions, suggestions for video ideas, or um, if you want to add to anything that I've said, use the comments below and I make sure that I read them all. Okay, so hopefully the next video will be in a week's time if my internet holds up. Cheers, thanks, bye.